and welcome to my interview with Alex Reynolds from AEW, part of the Dark Order. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Can't complain. It's Thank a nice, lovely Monday morning here. <laughs> coming on and uh, letting me talk to you and ask you some questions about your career and other things like that. Yeah, my pleasure. Questions here. So the first question that I'm probably sure everyone asks you is when did you start becoming a pro wrestler and thinking that's something you could do? Um, man. Uh, so I was a fan probably like as long as I could remember. Um, but the moment that I kind of realized, okay, I want to try this, you know, uh, I was at survivor series 2002 in Madison square garden uh Shawn michaels just won the elimination chamber uh won the world title confetti was coming down and i just remember like feeling that roar of the crowd and that just genuine emotion from the crowd and being like oh man like i want to feel this like this is you know it just i'll never forget it like that moment just kind of took me took me in uh and i knew that there was kind of no going back after that so i was about uh 16 at the time when that happened uh or it feels about 15 because then on my 16th birthday i told my parents uh you know maybe not right now but in a couple years like i'm i'm going to to be a wrestler and then ever since then it was pretty much the only thing on my mind that's that sort of, I'm 16 now, so that was sort of, I got into pro wrestling two years ago, roughly. Okay. And then ever since the last sort of six, eight months, I've been thinking, should I try, should I try? But then as you look into it, it's like, you guys make it look so easy. And, and it, it isn't, it, it's very difficult. And, and you can see that through, through your work and the people's works that it's very difficult, but you guys make it look very easy. Yeah, my my thing uh, was always I never wanted to look back when I was 40 and just be like, man, I wish I wish I just tried, yeah. you know. Um, so like whenever I do like signings or uh, any type of like meet and greets and people say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about getting into wrestling. It's like, you know, try it. What's definitely something what's the I'm worst, in the future? Try, what, you know. Yeah, it, it's not going to hurt anyone to just try it and, you know, try it and go give it, give it everything you have. That's kind of always been my outlook. Do you remember what your first match was? Yeah, so I actually have, like, a, it's actually like a pretty cool first match. Um, it was myself and uh, this guy, Dan Barry, uh, who is like a local New York guy, but, uh, I mean, he's done... OTT, he's done PWG, uh, Beyond Wrestling. So he's been around for a while. And this was 2007. Uh, so it was myself and Dan Barry against Tony Nice and Trent. That that's quite that's quite a, a good first match, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, you know, being in there with those guys kind of eased all my nerves. Yeah. Did you so sort of when you when you decided you wanted to become a pro wrestler? Did you want to do single stuff or, or were you more leaning towards the, the tag side or was that something that sort of ever crossed your mind? Uh, I was definitely leaning more towards single stuff. You know, um, the tag stuff didn't really kind of cross my mind uh, until like meeting Silver and you know, kind of, you know, he joined our wrestling school like two weeks after me. So we've kind of always been together. Uh, so it wasn't like after a couple of years, it's like, oh, okay, we can, it would be cool to like team together. And then, I mean, that was like 2011. So here we are now. That was going to be my next question was how did you meet John? Was it a sort of thing if he went to the same school as you, as you just said? Yeah, yeah. And so uh, he went, he, I remember him signing up. He came with his mom. And he was like 14 years old and he was probably like, God, maybe 110 pounds. Um, 
just this little kid. And uh, I remember his mom asking, because we lived maybe like 10, 15 minutes away from each other. So his mom asked me if I could drive him home from wrestling practice every so how old were you at that point? Were you I was 19. So there's a five year difference between yeah. yeah. So like, you know, now it's not a big deal. Now it's but... not a big deal, but back then yeah. it sounds 19, yeah. You know, I was a freshman in college, he was a freshman in high school. That was, you know, That's, I was yeah. out going to bars, you know. He I don't know, but just playing video games or whatever a 14 year old kid does <laughs> okay. um so like there were a lot of awkward car rides but you know that just kind of shows the power of wrestling like yeah you never know who you're gonna become friends with or you know you, you end up becoming friends with people you never thought you might have been friends with in any other aspect in life but you yeah. have this love and passion for one thing and that kind of brings you together so obviously as you start to get better you started to make a name for yourself on the independent scene and through new york and america and all around that uh, tagging with with john and some of your own stuff as well so how did sort of as you were growing did you know this is definitely going somewhere i'm, I'm destined for for something at, at the start of tagging with him or was it a thing of this is fun for now, but maybe after six months having a bit of fun, we'll go off and do what my original plan was. Uh, God, I never had an original plan. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, my biggest thing was always like, okay, was, was each year, did I do something better or bigger than the last? Did I accomplish something, you know, like, okay, uh, this year I had X amount of matches, you know, the next year I had, you know, maybe more, or maybe like, I remember, okay, I've never flown any, no one's, a, no one's flown me anywhere for wrestling. And I remember like accomplishing that and being like, Oh, okay, cool. And then going to different States, like, okay, last year I wrestled in the Northeast, but this year I branched out into the Midwest and Florida. And, you know, so I always kind of, tried to like okay there's there's progression here i'm doing yeah. something right uh i believe this is going to lead somewhere but you know yeah, there's so many variables there's so many yeah you know uh but yeah i always believed in myself enough like all right things are moving in an upper direction so Let's just kind of continue yeah, and see where this takes us. So obviously, how did you at AEW come into talks about them maybe signing you? And how did that conversation start? Uh, so John and I had a relationship with the Young Bucks. Um, we had wrestled a couple times on like an indie uh, they were the ones to get us into PWG. Um, so they knew us, they liked us. And when all of these like kind of rumors about AEW had started, you know, it yeah. wasn't called AEW yet, but like people knew, okay, something is kind of going on here. Um, so this was like December of 2018. Uh, John and I just messaged them and we're like, Hey, you know, just wanted to see what's going on. Like we hear these things and if there's any chance we can work together, you know, in the future, we'd love to. Yeah. And they responded like, you know, look, nothing's set in stone, but, um, you know, we'll keep you guys in mind. Yeah. Uh, and we just kind of, for the next couple months, we just kind of, uh, stayed in contact, you know, just message them every, you know, every few months. Um, and then, it was like September of 2019. John and I wrestled uh, Heavy Machinery on SmackDown. Yeah. Uh, so that was like a Tuesday. And then that Thursday, we got messaged about going to Philly for the third episode of Dynamite. Uh, if we wanted to do it, like come down. Yeah. You know, they had an idea. So 
we obviously weren't going to pass that up no so uh and then it was just kind of like all right you know, it's just a hey we're going to bring you in for this one thing and it's like okay so we went we wrestled santana and ortiz in about 90 seconds uh we thought we were going to have like this cool long match and it wasn't but you know that's what we were brought in for and yeah, that's kind of the attitude that we had. Like, hey, we're here to do a job and make these guys look good. And that's what we did. And then it was just like, uh, I remember Matt Jackson was like, you know, maybe uh, maybe we like bring you guys back next week or, you know, and maybe you guys are just like the guys that keep losing. And then finally you get like a win or something. So we're like, yeah, sure. That would be great. Uh So we, I've just had some slight technical issues in the fact that my computer just decided to give up. Um, <laughs> hopefully this has been merged. So it doesn't seem like that's just happened, but I'm just covering my back anyway. So um, what was the last question there about signing with AEW? So yeah. your debut was against Santana and Ortiz. You lost it about 90 seconds. So and you, you mentioned that week as well. You also had a match in WWE on the Tuesday, was that sort of nice to see that you were, these companies were, were seeing you and the, the two biggest names in, in the pro wrestling industry, seeing That's... you and John, but then also losing in quick succession both times? <laughs> so it was, uh, it was vastly different. Um, you know, the WWE match, uh, it kind of comes together like before the show, the extras will wrestle each other while some people watch, most people don't. Um, and then, uh, you know, if there's a spot, then they kind of pick from that. So like John and I wrestled each other, but, you know, Tony Nese was a good friend of ours, went up to, God, I think it was maybe either John Cone or maybe Jeff Jarrett was, I think Jeff Jarrett was the agent. He might have went up to both and was like, hey, like, these are my friends. You know, they're really good. They'll do a, ju- a good they'll do a good job tonight. And then they used us. And that was kind of it. I don't think it was like any type of look, whereas like AEW contacted us personally and was like, hey, you know, we want you guys for this role. Um, so it was a little different, but, uh, you know, I think. It was definitely cool because, like, the SmackDown match was in Madison yeah. Square Garden. So, you know, for two kids from New York, that's pretty a pretty cool bucket list thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just vastly different. <laughs> yeah. Um, so obviously, when when you officially signed with AEW, um, how did you joining the Dark Order sort of happen? Who asked you about that? How did that come um, about? Um, you know, so like Dark Order debuted and they are kind of like misunderstood. They just were kind of thrown out there. It's like, who are these two guys with these creepy dudes in masks? Um, so it didn't really do well. And then they kind of went back and had this whole idea of like, all right, uh, you know, we're going to kind of take some losers and turn them into winners and, Mm -hmm. you know, lead them on the path to winning. Um, So I don't know whose idea it was for us. Uh, I just remember Matt Jackson kind of like telling us, Oh, we might put you guys in the dark order. And then they obviously ran it by Stu and Uno. Um, And, uh, you know, we had met them a few times on the Indies and, they knew that, you know, in the ring we were good. And, you know, so they kind of signed off on it. Um, and then they just, like, we went to, uh, I forgot where we were, but they're like, oh, yeah, you have this, you know, hotel room, you know, like, vignette to film when you get here. And we weren't under contract, any type of contract yet. And they're doing, like, a, you know, a little vignette thing with me and John where we see, like, somebody on the hotel room TV speaking to us. Um, so we were excited, you know, at that point we knew that AW was the place we wanted to go. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and we were going to just kind of take any opportunity and just run with it. So we were kind of pumped about it. So as sort of the dark order sort of evolved and, and changed into this, this bigger thing in AEW, and obviously being the elite, being a part of that, uh, how with being the elite, because I, I, I love that, that show. It, it's wonderful. How interesting is it being a part of it? Because I, I just, I struggle to find in my head a way where, like the the little little things you did as a dark order. How many times do they take to do and things like that? Um, you know, with being the elite, like I remember watching it before AEW, and you know, and, and I just remember like, oh, this is this is so great. Like, just these silly little kind of bits and you know while they document their life on the road like it was just a cool concept and uh at the time uh you know it was like right around after brody wrestled moxley like we kind of had nothing coming up like we weren't doing anything on tv so we were all just kind of like a little defeated like what can we do um and then I had I had an idea of me and John, you know, trying to get people to join the Dark Order. You know, hey, if you join the Dark Order, you know, you'll start winning more and this, it'll be great. When the whole joke was that, like, we never won a match. Um, so we just talked about how great the Dark Order is and how you'll start winning. And it's like, well, you guys haven't won. Um, yeah. So I kind of had that idea. And then, like, I want to say, like, that week... Uh, when we were at TV in Jacksonville, um, unbeknownst to me, I think, uh, you know, Uno was talking with Young Bucks and I guess talking about how we have nothing coming up. And they're like, oh, well, why don't you do something on, you know, <laughs> BTE? This way, at least you guys are doing something, you know, maybe you guys can come up with something. So then Uno tells me this and I was like, oh, that's so funny. I have this idea for BTE. And then, we're like, all right, like, let's set it up. And we kind of did it. And it was originally just supposed to be for me and John. Yeah. Um, but we did that first group one. And that first time Brody threw those papers at Uno, like we kind of realized like, oh, we kind of have something here. Um, and I think it was, it was exactly what we needed. It showed mm-hmm. a different side of us, <laughs> you know, it showed, um that we all have personalities yeah. and that was the biggest thing especially like you know when 10 and 5 and anna came in like it's a huge group it's easy to get lost in the shuffle yeah uh we and we were all just kind of like background <laughs> people in weird masks mm-hmm. so this was a chance for us to just show some personality and i think that's when this kind of underground support for the dark order really started to you know, be seen. Yeah, I remember I, I was sort of only this last two, three months I've properly got into AEW. Like it's been every week, must see TV before that. So if I watched WWE, I watched other stuff, but I hadn't properly got into it. And I always watch B- BTE and things like that and clips on YouTube and the odd show. And I always saw, saw you guys doing what you're doing and I'm like, hmm, this is good. And then I've only sort of realised this last three months of like, what have I been doing? Why haven't I been watching this the last year and a bit? Yeah. It's wonderful. Obviously, as we're recording this last Wednesday and Friday, we had AW Grand Slam. Uh, how, obviously, and that was off the catapult of All Out and how great that show was, how does it feel to have the CM Punks, the, the Brian Danielsons, the Adam Coles, in the locker room that, that you and so many other people are in and did you ever think that would be a possibility that you'd share a locker room with CM Punk um I mean I guess it was never really something I had thought of uh because he you know was just so adamant that he was done with wrestling yeah so I mean I guess that just speaks volumes to um the kind of vibe and atmosphere that AEW has both you know with the fans and you know at the live shows but also backstage yeah. um and in the locker room 
uh, to, you know, bring them back. And man, it's like, it elevates everybody's game when guys like CM Punk, Brian Danielson and Adam Cole come in. Um, Cause like, man, it's, it's the coolest locker room, yeah. but everybody, you know, there's a level of like, Hey, you know, we all can hang and, you know, yeah, it's called all elite wrestling for a reason. Like yeah. we're literally all of us are elite, you know, mm-hmm. elite wrestlers, elite athletes. So like we need to prove it. So it's almost like a, all right. Yeah. Like bring CM Punk, Brian Anderson and Adam Cole. Like it's just going to make, you know, it should make everybody want to work yeah. harder because man, these guys are mega stars, you know? Um, but also, you know, on the flip side, it's just a wealth of knowledge that they have Yeah, that like, you know, the experience they've experienced probably everything a, a dozen times. Yeah. So it's cool to have that type of person who's experienced, but also approachable in the locker room, you know, where you don't feel like, Oh, I can't talk to, I can't talk to Brian, you know, uh, that he's going to be pissy or what if he snaps at me? You know, and he's the coolest dude. And that kind of goes with everybody, you know, yeah. like, man, you know, you never know how people are in real life. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, are they going to be a dick? I don't know. But everybody like Jericho, coolest guy, you know, uh, Jake Roberts, like all these guys that like, yeah. you know, will go out of their way to give people advice or even just, you know, hey, you know, how's everything going? little mm-hmm. things like that, that, man, these guys are mega stars. They don't have to do that, but they're cool dudes. Care about the business as well. Like yeah. Want. You know, like we're all in this for the same reasons and, you know, there's a bond over that. And so yeah. it's really a really cool vibe. When did you, so this is something I've always been fascinated with being sort of behind the scenes and being an actual, an actual wrestler in, in these companies. So did you, do you know as talent that, the, the likes of CM Punk, Brian Danielson are coming in or until the day, or is it kept very quiet or is it very open to say, right, these guys are coming in then? Uh, I mean, so like I, I wasn't at all out. Um, yeah. So I don't know if they were backstage or if they were kept hidden, you know, um, obviously like the rumors are going around, you know, everybody was hearing them. So like you heard rumors, but, there wasn't like any type of formal announcement. Um, but as opposed, like, as, as it pertains to like the day of the show, I, I wasn't there. So yeah, I don't know what the situation was. So going I was on, watching, so, I was watching on paper yeah. like everybody else. <laughs> so going on, obviously you have just welcomed your first child into the world. Congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Um, how is that? Is it, sleep is it how are you coping with it is it what you imagined how is it how is it going uh it's been going great you know uh you know you sleep when you can (laughs) um but it's been it's been a really cool experience and uh you know it's kind of i've realized that it's nothing you can really prepare for no matter what people tell you or like oh it'll be great it'll be hard you know you don't know what it feels like until you are kind of in it, but thankfully yeah. everybody's healthy. So I certainly cannot complain. Yeah. So this question, I hope this research I did was true. Otherwise I'm going to look really silly here. So I saw that you are quite a big fan of action figures. Sure. am. Good. I'm glad about that. So <laughs> my first question is, do you have sort of a collection what's in that collection sort of thing. yes I, it's actually right behind me oh here we go this is this is perfect let me see if i can so oh, up wow. top all my aw guys i have a bunch of aw ones uh still in the box because i need to get another ring to display them yeah um and then this is like all of like my mattel stuff i mean that's what i want to have you know like, so I yeah have- when a few. When I got my first house, uh, it was kind of, uh, it's like, hey, we can do whatever we want. I just want uh, the basement area to yeah. display my action figures. 
I have a few, but as sort of in the UK, it's a lot more difficult to get AEW figures. Oh, really? Sort of one shop that sells them. Oh, geez. And there's about the nearest one is about 40 minutes away from me. Oof. So when I did, I don't know what you guys have uh, over there, but I did my, so the end of uh, year 11, which is this year. So when I was this age, when I did my exams, we went on my results day to go to a place near it. I was like, right, this is my chance. I'm going to pick one up. <laughs> and I was like, there was because I'd had a few online and I've been like, right, I really want a Cody. And I found a Cody and I was so happy because I've got it on display. Nice. So, which ones do you not have in your collection? You like, um, uh, man, so I actually, I actually don't have a Cody, um, but that's because I'm trying to get my hands on, uh, I think it's the one of 1000 series for Cody, the chase. I have so one in, a series one. Oh yeah. yeah. I brought the box. Nice. Nice. Yeah. The series yeah. four, the chase, the one in the gold tights. Yeah. Um, those are the. So it's a very expensive figure. So that's yeah. why I kind of haven't pulled the trigger on it. Um, and there's a bunch of Cody's that I could get, but that gear he wore the night he wrestled Brody uh, and Brody beat him for the title. Yeah. So, like, to me, like, if it's, you know, someone that I've wrestled and like they have a figure of like the gear they were wearing like i'd yeah. always choose that one over it um like the kenny omega that i have there's a bunch of really cool kenny's and there's a yeah. probably going to be a million more coming out deservingly so <laughs> um but like we did uh it was me john and five against the young bucks and kenny last year and mm -hmm. like he wore that gear so it was like okay i want this action figure yeah. to kind of represent that so yeah the series series four chase cody is the is the biggest one it's my white whale right now yeah so obviously how long is it going to be till you get your action figure should be soon <laughs> is, is it been announced yet or no it hasn't um so a couple of the other dark order guys have ones coming yeah i think by the end of the year maybe i don't know so if hopefully I'm correct, they announced Brody, didn't they? Yeah, it was Brody. Because I remember reading that and thinking, whatever I have to do to get my hands on that. Oh, absolutely. Because I have, I've been wanting I a saw. Brody uh, for a while. So I was uh, up visiting family in the market and I bought this one. Nice. But I want one in a box. Yeah. And I'm very into keep them in the box. So they okay. look nice. Um, yeah. But I really want, well, when that comes out, I might have to spend quite a bit of money getting that transported from America. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm probably yeah. gonna get I'm probably gonna get at least two. So yeah. So my, my phone is just so with, with with action figures, when was your first like real interest in them? When you were younger? Uh, or... Yeah, yeah. I was I think in like fifth grade and just getting into wrestling. This was around like ninety six. 798 and uh my friend had a bunch of wrestling figures and then i remember like my dad came home one day and he bought me like a ring he bought me uh legion of doom and an undertaker figure those were, like the first three that i got um and then it was just a slippery slope like yeah you know just so many uh, like christmas lists just front page and back of all act like it was, yeah. I was just hooked, had my own like action figure, you know, federation and would book my own pay-per-views and, you know, it I missed out literally on consumed me. And like, yeah, I mean, hey, you know, I could have been doing worse things than sitting yeah. in my room and playing with action figures. I mean, I, I do that on, on universe mode on 2K now. I sort of get all the downloads I want, get all the people, because I was sort of only got into it two years ago. It's when I'm like 15. Mm -hmm. It's like I like them to collect, but I would never take them out of the box, like ever. But um, so with – this is another question. With all the, the social media side of it, 
and everything like that and all these lists like the PWI and things do you take interests in them or is it a sort of thing of if you're on them you're on them if you not you don't really care yeah i don't really you know i don't really try to put too much thought in it like it's always cool it's always flattering you know to be kind of recognized for what you're doing mm-hmm. um but you know as you know with aw and like kind of getting more i, I guess press or whatever yeah um you get a lot more feedback, like, you know, after a match, when you go on Twitter, it's just, you know, yeah, mostly positive, but all it takes is one negative one to just yeah. ruin your day. Exactly. Um, so I really try to not, you know, worry about what social media is saying. Like, you know, I've been wrestling for, almost 16 years like so you would have started if, the year i was born yeah yeah <laughs> crazy so like i know if something's good if something's not good you yeah. know i don't need a bunch of people telling me so because they feel one way about it or they think it should have been done this way you know yeah. it's in my mind it's like hey let's just all sit back and just enjoy the show you know um so i really just try not to focus on any of that and i try to just do the best that i can do and control what i can control yeah um so obviously you'd mentioned about rumors before about people coming in but there's also been rumors sort of on cody sort of spurred them on in a media call a few months ago about trios titles coming to aw if you were to be in a trio who would the trio be with? Obviously, I imagine John would be one. But if the other member it couldn't be part of the Dark Order, who would you like to tag with? So we've we've had a couple. Uh, recently, it's been, we've done a lot of six mans, me, John, and 10. Yeah. Um, and I, we all, like, we really love doing six mans together. You know, we've kind of got a good vibe going. Yeah. Um, I also love doing six mans with Hangman. You know, me, John, and Hangman had a couple, and those were just a blast. Yeah. Um, so I think if I had to pick, it would either be it would be, it would be a it would be a toss up between Ten and Hangman. That's yeah. But I'd say more recently, like the ones we've been doing, me, John, and Ten, have been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um. Sort of. I hope. I hope the trio titles come. I think yeah. those would be great. I do as well. I definitely think with every title in AEW, it seems like it matters. Yeah. It seems like if you put the T... <laughs> by the way, I'm re- for people watching, I- I'm recovering from a cold, so I'm coughing <laughs> quite a bit, uh, but I'm trying to stop myself. Um, whether it's a TNT title or tag titles or, or the AEW title, you know those those titles matter. It's not like oh, well, that's just happened. It's like, oh, right. wow, the tag titles have just changed. Like, Yeah, it's um, a big deal. All Out was the first AEW pay-per-view I ever bought. Oh, nice. This is a good one to buy. And, and I watch it on like, every couple of days. I get home from college and think, do you know what? I'm going to watch All Out again because it was <laughs> top to bottom. It was just incredible. Yeah. So you sat at home watching that. What, what were your reactions of like? How did you find it? You know, it... because I worked there and like, I know all these people and kind of, you know, it was cool to just step back and purely just watch it as a fan. Like I got flashbacks of like, you know, being a kid and watching pay-per-views at home, you know, like that's what I was able to just like sit back and kind of enjoy this beautiful show as a yeah. pure wrestling fan and it was it was very very cool and then afterwards i was all fired up and mm-hmm. you know when i watch go. pay-per-views they normally finish about 4 or 5 a.m oh so, yeah it's got to be tough so when something happens at the end of a pay-per-view 
I can't get up and scream. <laughs> I want to, but I did. Uh, there we go. That night, because I was just like, I can't not. Like, I, I actually, the what was your favorite match on that card? Oh, man. Young Bucks, Lucha Brothers was just. That's mine. Just pretty crazy. I would say, because I've only been a fan for two, three years, but I've gone back and watched a lot of wrestling. I would say one of the best tag matches ever. Yeah. That because some of the things those guys came up with, and obviously you work with them, so you know this. But as I find me thinking, how did they think we're gonna throw a thumbtack shoe into a cage and super kick you with it? Yeah. Like that would never it's come across my mind of like Yeah. It's just incredible. Yeah. My last question to you is, is going to be, if you could have a dream match or go a singles match or a tag match against anyone you've never faced before, who would it be? Hmm. That's a really difficult question. It is very, it is very, very difficult. Um, hmm. I mean, we've, kind of wrestled before but I mean I guess you have to go with Kenny Omega in a singles yeah. man like say it's a toss up three way toss up yep uh, Kenny Brian Danielson and Pac yeah uh, Pac like those, those I think favorites. you know I mean, based off of what Kenny and Brian did last week on Dynamite, just absolutely insane. There's no way to question that they're not just two of the best wrestlers in the world. And I think Pac is right up there with them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I think those are those. It's a three way tie for yeah for singles match okay. tag match. Okay, you know, we haven't there we go. Yeah, we haven't uh, wrestled. Me and John haven't wrestled the Young Bucks in a straight up tag in AEW. So I think that would be a lot of fun. That could definitely happen in the near future. I yeah, think. I hope so. So, have you got anything coming up you'd like to tell everyone about or anything like that? No, I mean, just tune in every Wednesday, 8 p.m. tonight, because I'm putting this yeah. on Wednesday. Oh, in there Rochester, we go. Tonight. Brody, <laughs> hometown. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so gonna it's going to be a, uh, it'll be a, uh, it'll be a great show and it'll be uh, an emotional one. So definitely, uh, definitely looking forward to it, but yeah, are watch. You gonna be there or are, you, uh, are you still on uh, looking after your, your newly born child or are you going to be? Oh no, I'll be there. Back? Yeah. I'll be there. So tune, um, I'll be tuning in on, I'll be watching it Thursday morning, I think. Yeah. Well, and I'll look out for you on, on AEW Dynamite. Absolutely. And don't forget AEW Rampage on Fridays. On Rampage on Fridays. Saturdays. Yeah. <laughs> Slash Saturdays, yeah. yeah. So I'd like to thank you again for letting me interview you, have a great chat with you. And just I, I've seen your work and really admired your work in the last few months and years and things and really think you're, you're great. So I would really appreciate you giving me the time to talk to you today. No, it was my pleasure. I'm glad I could uh, glad I can do this. Thank you. No problem. Thank you.